It was just after 4 a.m. when the music died and Courtney Stauffer's apartment finally went silent. Something bad happened. The party is over and the beautiful young girl who lived here is missing. I think Courtney surrounded herself with people she should not have. A free spirit who loved the clothes, music, and attitude of the 1960s. But did all that peace and love lead down a dark road? For Courtney Stauffer, it all started here in Palmyra, Pennsylvania, a perfect blend of country living and city life. The pretty green-eyed blonde grew up loving the outdoors and all it had to offer. It's a very nice country setting. Waking up in the morning, the sun rises right in the front of the farm. And that was Courtney. She was just filled with brilliance and brightness. She is exuberant, full of giddy energy and love. I want you to close your eyes, take a minute, think about Courtney. What do you see? I see Courtney in the middle of a beautiful sun, bright, warm. I can feel it right now. <laughs> She always called me sunshine. What is it like being Courtney's mom? <laughs> Courtney's laughter was loud and contagious and exciting. Courtney loved to laugh. She liked to have fun. But even Courtney's parents admit their beautiful, loving daughter is also bold. Now they worry she may have been too bold for her own good. When she was little, she was feisty and she had a mind of her own. Sometimes it rubbed people the wrong way. Sometimes she couldn't contain it or control it, and uh, she irritated some people. <laughs> At 21, when this fresh-faced beauty leaves the safety of her parents' nest, that boundless energy blooms. She was on her own for the first time. She got her own apartment with her boyfriend. So she was starting her life. And Courtney, the free spirit, takes to her new independence like a moth to a flame. Well, Courtney was 21. You know, she was going to the bar, she was partying, she was finding herself, she had her own apartment. She was a hippie at heart. She wore tie-dye everything. Saturday, July 28th was supposed to be one long party for Courtney, her boyfriend Bradley, and other guests at their apartment. But before the night can even get started, neighbors call the cops and cut the party short. Probably about 9 o'clock Saturday evening, the authorities went over and did break up what was essentially kind of an underage drinking party. Bradley is caught drinking, and that's a big problem. He was on probation for a DUI, so cops haul him off to jail. Courtney is furious with the busybodies next door. Courtney already had issues with these people because she felt they were directly related to her boyfriend and getting picked up that day. She believed they snitched on him because he had alcohol or they saw someone bringing alcohol into the home. She and her friends decide to move the party down the road to the nearby town of Harrisburg. But more alcohol isn't the cure for Courtney's fury. She gets into a screaming match with another guy and his girlfriend at the bar. If Courtney had a problem with you, she would physically say it and if you throw a little bit of alcohol to it, it even brings out some of the feelings that you have inside already. Courtney's kicked out of the bar, and now she's really fuming. She heads back to her apartment with an old friend, Cody Pruitt. Cody's following Courtney to make sure she gets home safe. I feel like she didn't want to be there by herself, and she knew that there was problems with the neighbors and probably bringing big strep and fella back might help the situation. And she's looking to settle the score with her nosy neighbors. She confronts the neighbors, shouting, screaming, yelling. Cops are called a second time. Courtney and her neighbor Todd were about to come to blows. The police came. They were all outside in the yard. And Courtney was in Todd's face. They were chest to chest and yelling at each other and um, the police came and told them all to go back into their own apartments and just to leave each other alone. Cody takes Courtney inside to cool down, but Courtney is on fire. Courtney was still upset when she got up into her apartment. She was stomping on the floor and yelling at the neighbors. Cody said she was irate. She was so mad at them for calling the police. 
Less than an hour later, cops are called again. But this time, to their surprise, officers find nothing but peace and quiet. The police came um, a little bit after four, and by then all of the apartment lights were off in Courtney's apartment. The officers went up to Courtney's apartment. Uh, it was quiet, and the determination was made that if the disorderly behavior is not occurring any longer, you know, we're going to leave it go and, and, and let the people sleep it off. What do you think about that, Scott? It sucks. <laughs> I mean, they had that one chance. One chance. But in this one case, when they could have saved a young girl's life, possibly. But they don't knock the door down. They know there was already a situation. Why? At 7.30 that morning, Cody wakes up. Courtney is nowhere to be found. Cody told Scott that he didn't see Courtney, so he left. And he went to a local convenience store where he texted her. But Courtney would never receive that text. Sometime in the previous three hours, she went missing. Monday morning when I woke up, I just had a really uneasy feeling. So as soon as I got up, I went straight to her apartment because I hadn't heard from her. No one had heard from her all day Sunday. What Courtney's mom finds is disturbing, not because anything is wrong, but because everything is exactly where it should be, except Courtney. Her keys were on the floor where she always threw them. Her shoes were kicked off where she would always kick them off. Her dog met me and I said, where's mommy, where's mommy? And I knew something was wrong immediately because if she went outside even for a walk, she took the dog with her. If she went anywhere in her car, she took the dog with her. And her car was sitting in the driveway with the windows down. The longer the time went on and the more we waited and she didn't come back. And the longer Courtney's parents wait, the more their panic grows. What do you think happened? The problem with this case is there's so many suspicions. I mean, really. Courtney made some enemies that night. Did that fight with the neighbor go too far? Did the bar brawl follow Courtney home? Courtney Stauffer was a hippie chick who loved having fun. But after a Saturday night of hard partying, the pretty young woman disappeared. It left everyone asking, is she just missing? Or did something much more sinister happen to her? Right from the start, cops were perplexed. Her apartment shows no sign of foul play. Her keys and wallet, her phone undisturbed, her beloved dog left alone. We don't have a crime scene. There's no physical evidence in the apartment to suggest that any kind of a struggle took place inside the apartment. Mr. Arnold, is it weird that Courtney would leave her phone, her wallet, her dog. That's suspicious, right? It's very suspicious. While we don't know it's a homicide, we've treated it as a homicide from day one because those things don't make sense for her to have just left those things behind voluntarily. It's a mystery with no body, no physical evidence, and no end in sight. We did searches, but we had nowhere to look because she was at her apartment and then she wasn't. So we just walked the streets of her town and we looked in dumpsters and under bushes. We were just, we were looking everywhere, but we couldn't find her. Describe the feeling of looking for your daughter in a dumpster. It's horrible. It's sad. I was hoping to God I wouldn't find her in any of those places. But then, out of the blue, a young woman who claims to be a friend reaches out, and Courtney's mom's heart nearly stops. She had private messaged me on Facebook telling me her story, and I advised her to please contact the detectives or the DA's office to let them know what, what, sh what she thought she knew. Amanda Ballister thought she knew what happened to Courtney. She tells her story to the cops and then a local news reporter. Okay, Amanda, tell us what happened the night Courtney went missing. 
Um, two people that I'm convinced have done this um, basically um, went to her apartment seeking um, drugs and money that were in there. They had stole the money, from what I understand, and um, then killed Courtney, rolled her up into a carpet, and drove her to Memorial Lake, weighted her body down, and threw her in the lake and disposed of the body. Amanda's bombshell claim is the first hint pointing to where Courtney might be found, a place hidden in the back roads of the Pennsylvania countryside. This is Memorial Lake. It's one of the places cops were led to look for Courtney. That information came from a tip. But was that tip credible? Lots of people didn't think so. And for Courtney's family, as much as they want to find her, they've always hoped the answer was no. Pennsylvania State Police dispatched search teams. They search the lake with sonar equipment and scour the shoreline for clues. Nothing. Correct. No evidence of a crime. No carpet. No Courtney. I was a little bit discouraged with the lake thing, whether the girl was credible or not. So what do you think, that this tipster was a liar? Uh, confused. You know, I hate to tear someone's character down. Maybe they were just confused. Cops are confused, too. They're back to square one, running down every other lead. What about the couple Courtney battled with at the bar the night she disappeared? Or the neighbors who called the cops on the wild child next door? I went looking for the neighbor Courtney almost came to blows with that night. And I don't see any activity whatsoever. We couldn't find him at home, but the DA did. Every single person that we know to have any association with Courtney Stauffer has been inter interviewed multiple times by multiple law enforcement officers, again, to make sure that we're not missing anything that, that is, is hidden there. What about Cody Pruitt, the man who kept her out of fights and stayed the night at Courtney's? According to media reports, cops did obtain a search warrant for Cody's property. He even takes a polygraph test and offers up his DNA for analysis. After that, cops never considered him a suspect or person of interest. So if it wasn't Cody Pruitt, who took Courtney? What is the likelihood that someone she was with that night is responsible for what happened or knows what happened? I think that's the most logical answer, if I'm being honest. Um, but what the likelihood is, I, I, I truly don't know. With every clue leading to a dead end, the theories start stretching beyond her hometown and down some very dark roads. There are people out there that say Courtney was deeper in this drug game and perhaps something really horrible happened because of it. I say that's possible. We know she had connections with drug dealers. We have heard a lot of the things you're referring to. Uh, are those all possibilities? They are, unfortunately, all possibilities. Possibilities are all police have to go on. Still, they're actively running down every new tip. For the family of missing flower child Courtney Stauffer, all they have now is hope. Do you think Courtney's still alive? I don't. So it's hope. I love being proved wrong. The situation will be perfect. And Courtney's mom and dad say that's what keeps them going. You will never stop searching for her. No, this search will not end.